Dyslexia is characterized by difficulty in learning to read fluently and with accurate comprehension despite normal intelligence. This includes difficulty with phonological awareness, phonological decoding, processing speed, orthographic coding, auditory short-term memory, language skills slash verbal comprehension, and or rapid naming. Developmental Reading Disorder, DRD, is the most common learning disability. Dyslexia is the most recognized of reading disorders, however not all reading disorders are linked to dyslexia. Adult dyslexics can read with good comprehension, although they tend to read more slowly than non-dyslexics, and perform more poorly at spelling, and nonsense word reading, a measure of phonological awareness. Some see dyslexia as distinct from reading difficulties resulting from other causes, such as a non-neurological deficiency with vision or hearing, or from poor or inadequate reading instruction. There are three proposed cognitive subtypes of dyslexia, auditory, visual, and attentional, although individual cases of dyslexia are better explained by specific underlying neuropsychological deficits and co-occurring learning disabilities, for instance attention deficit slash hyperactivity disorder, math disability, etc. Although it is considered to be a receptive language-based learning disability in the research literature, dyslexia also affects one's expressive language skills. Researchers at MIT found that people with dyslexia exhibited impaired voice recognition abilities. It is believed the prevalence of dyslexia is around 5 to 10 percent of a given population, although there have been no studies to indicate an accurate percentage. Classification The World Federation of Neurology defines dyslexia as a disorder manifested by difficulty in learning to read despite conventional instruction, adequate intelligence, and sociocultural opportunity. The National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke gives the following definition for dyslexia. Dyslexia is a brain-based type of learning disability that specifically impairs a person's ability to read. These individuals typically read at levels significantly lower than expected despite having normal intelligence. Although the disorder varies from person to person, common characteristics among people with dyslexia are difficulty with spelling, phonological processing, the manipulation of sounds, and or rapid visual verbal responding. In adults, dyslexia usually occurs after a brain injury or in the context of dementia. It can also be inherited in some families and recent studies have identified a number of genes that may predispose an individual to developing dyslexia. Other published definitions are purely descriptive, or embody causal theories. Varying definitions are used for dyslexia from researchers and organizations around the world. It appears that this disorder encompasses a number of reading skills, deficits and difficulties with a number of causes, rather than a single condition. Castles and Carl that described phonological and surface types of developmental dyslexia by analogy to classical subtypes of alexia, acquired dyslexia, which are classified according to the rate of errors in reading non-words. However, the distinction between surface and phonological dyslexia has not replaced the old empirical terminology of dysphonetic versus dyslexic types of dyslexia. The surface slash phonological distinction is only descriptive and devoid of any etiological assumption as to the underlying brain mechanisms. Studies have, however, alluded to potential differential underlying brain mechanisms in these populations given performance differences. The dysphonetic slash dyslexic distinction refers to two different mechanisms, one that relates to a speech discrimination deficit and another that relates to a visual perception impairment. However, some think that dyslexia can increase the capacity to think and perceive multidimensionally and can help further utilize the brain's ability to alter and create perceptions. Signs and Symptoms Some early symptoms that correlate with a later diagnosis of dyslexia include delays in speech, letter reversal or mirror writing, and being easily distracted by background noise. This pattern of early distractibility is partially explained by the co-occurrence of dyslexia and attention deficit slash hyperactivity disorder. Although each disorder occurs in approximately 5% of children, 25-40% of children with either dyslexia or ADHD meet criteria for the other disorder. At later ages symptoms can include a difficulty identifying or generating rhyming words, or counting syllables in words, phonological awareness, a difficulty segmenting words into individual sounds, or blending sounds to make words, a difficulty with word retrieval or naming problems, see anomic aphasia, 41, commonly very poor.
spelling, 42, which has been called dysorthographia or dysgraphia, orthographic coding, whole word guesses, and tendencies to omit or add letters or words when writing and reading, are considered classic signs. Other classic signs for teenagers and adults with dyslexia, include trouble with summarizing a story, memorizing, reading aloud, and learning a foreign language 43. A common misconception about dyslexia, is that dyslexic readers write words backwards, or move letters around when reading, this only occurs in a very small population of dyslexic readers, 44, individuals with dyslexia, are better identified by reading accuracy, fluency, and writing skills that do not seem to match their level of intelligence from prior observations. Dyslexia and Biology Researchers have been trying to find a biological basis of dyslexia, since it was first identified by Oswald Birkin in 1881 left square bracket 45, and the term dyslexia coined in 1887 by Rudolf Berlin, 46, 47, the theories of the etiology of dyslexia have, and are evolving with each new generation of dyslexia researchers, and the more recent theories of dyslexia tend to enhance one or more of the older theories as understanding of the nature of dyslexia evolves, see theories of dyslexia. Effect of language orthography. The complexity of a language's orthography, that is its conventional spelling system, see orthographic depth, has a direct impact upon how difficult it is to learn to read that language. English has a comparatively deep orthography within the Latin alphabet writing system, with a complex orthographic structure, that employs spelling patterns at several levels, principally, letter sound correspondences, syllables, and morphemes. Other languages, such as Spanish, have mostly alphabetic orthographies that employ letter sound correspondences, so-called shallow orthographies. It is relatively easy to learn to read languages like Spanish, it is much more difficult to learn to read languages with more complex orthographies such as English. 48. Logographic writing systems, notably Japanese and Chinese characters, have graphemes that are not linked directly to their pronunciation, which pose a different type of dyslexic difficulty. 4950. From a neurological perspective different types of writing systems, for instance alphabetic as compared to logographic writing systems, require different neurological pathways in order to read, write, and spell. Because different writing systems require different parts of the brain to process the visual notation of speech, children with reading problems in one language might not have a reading problem in a language with a different orthography. The neurological skills required to perform the tasks of reading, writing, and spelling can vary between different writing systems. As a result, different neurological deficits can cause dyslexic problems in relation to different orthographies. 4950. Cross-cultural prevalence. Cross-cultural study of the prevalence of dyslexia is difficult as different scholars and different countries often use different criteria to distinguish the cases of dyslexia in the continuum between the able and delayed readers at schools. According to the existing literature, the prevalence of dyslexia can vary widely between cultures. For example, Crystal reports differences between 1% and 33%. According to some researchers, despite the significant differences between the writing systems, Italian, German and English populations suffer similarly from dyslexia. Exacerbating conditions. Several learning disabilities often occur with dyslexia, but it is unclear whether these learning disabilities share underlying neurological causes with dyslexia. These disabilities include Dysgraphia, a disorder which expresses itself primarily through writing or typing, although in some cases it may also affect eye-hand coordination, direction or sequence-oriented processes such as tying knots, or carrying out a repetitive task. In dyslexia, dysgraphia is often multifactorial, due to impaired letter writing automaticity, finger motor sequencing challenges, organizational and elaborative difficulties, and impaired visual word form which makes it more difficult to retrieve the visual picture of words required for spelling. Dysgraphia is distinct from dyspraxia in that dyspraxia is simply related to motor sequence impairment. Attention deficit disorder, a high degree of comorbidity has been reported between at slash at and dyslexia slash reading disorders, it occurs in between 12% and 24% of those with dyslexia. Auditory processing disorder, a condition that affects the ability to process auditory information. Auditory processing disorder is a listening disability. It can lead to problems with auditory memory and auditory sequencing. 
Many people with dyslexia have auditory processing problems and may develop their own logographic cues to compensate for this type of deficit. Auditory processing disorder is recognized as one of the major causes of dyslexia developmental dyspraxia, a neurological condition characterized by a marked difficulty in carrying out routine tasks involving balance, fine motor control, kinesthetic coordination, difficulty in the use of speech sounds, problems with short-term memory and organization are typical of dyspraxics. Experience of speech acquisition delays and speech and language problems can be due to problems processing and decoding auditory input prior to reproducing their own version of speech, and may be observed as stuttering, cluttering or hesitant speech. This section may be too technical for most readers to understand. Please help improve this section to make it understandable to non-experts without removing the technical details. The talk page may contain suggestions, June 2013. Clinically reported findings requiring further substantiation suggested that almost all of the many coexisting writing, spelling, math, memory, speech, concentration, sensory, balance, coordination symptoms and related comorbid disorders that were found to characterize dyslexics were consistent with and likely determined by multiple overlapping cerebral or vestibular dysfunctioning mechanisms. These symptoms and disorders were shown to respond favorably to cerebral or vestibular stabilizing slash enhancing medications and compensatory therapies. 71. An alternative hypothesis suggests that dyslexia may reflect one syndrome of reading and non reading symptoms of variable severities resulting when diversely scrambled sensory, motor, and related signals of cerebral or vestibular origin fail to be adequately processed by the varied reading and other brain structures modulating them. The normal to high IQ's favorable prognosis and even gifted functioning in dyslexia appear more consistent with intact higher brain structures having significant neuroplastic capabilities compensating for scrambled signals of lower brain origin than the reverse, diffusely impaired higher brain structures and functions failing to process clear signals 72, 73, 74. Management there is no cure for dyslexia, but dyslexic individuals can learn to read and write with educational support. 75. There are techniques and technical aids that can manage or even conceal symptoms of the disorder. 76. Removing stress and anxiety alone can improve written comprehension. 77. For dyslexia intervention with alphabet writing systems the fundamental aim is to increase a child's awareness of correspondences between graphemes and phonemes, and to relate these to reading and spelling. It has been found that training focused towards visual language and orthographic issues yields longer lasting gains than year oral phonological training. 78. There is some evidence that the use of specially tailored fonts may provide some measure of assistance for those suffering from dyslexia. 79. 80. Intervention early on while language areas in the brain are still developing is most successful in reducing long term impacts of dyslexia. 81. History. Dyslexia was identified by Oswald Birkin in 1881-82, but the term dyslexia was coined in 1887 by Rudolf Berlin, who was an ophthalmologist in Stuttgart. 83, he used the term to refer to a case of a young boy who had a severe impairment in learning to read and write in spite of showing typical intellectual and physical abilities in all other respects. In 1896 W. Pringle Morgan, a British physician from Seaford, East Sussex, published a description of a reading-specific learning disorder in a report to the British medical journal titled Congenital Word Blindness. This described the case of Percy, a 14-year-old boy who had not yet learned to read, yet showed normal intelligence, and was generally adept at other activities typical of children that age 84. Research the majority of currently available dyslexia research relates to the alphabetic writing system, and especially to languages of European origin. However, substantial research is also available regarding dyslexia for speakers of Arabic, Chinese, and Hebrew, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Neuroanatomy in the area of neurological research into dyslexia, modern neuroimaging techniques such as functional magnetic resonance imaging FMRI, and positron emission tomography PET, have produced clear evidence of structural differences in the brains of children with reading difficulties.
it has been found that people with dyslexia have a deficit in parts of the left hemisphere of the brain involved in reading, which includes the inferior frontal gyrus, inferior parietal labial, and middle and ventral temporal cortex 90. Brain activation studies using PET to study language have produced a breakthrough in understanding of the neural basis of language over the past decade. A neural basis for the visual lexicon and for auditory verbal short-term memory components have been proposed, 91, with some implication that the observed neural manifestation of developmental dyslexia is task-specific, that is, functional rather than structural, 92. Fleury's in dyslexics have provided important data supporting the interactive role of the cerebellum and cerebral cortex as well as other brain structures, 93, 94, 95. Genetics. Genetic research into dyslexia has its roots in the examination of post-autopsy brains of people with dyslexia, 96, 97, when they observed anatomical differences in the language center in a dyslexic brain, they showed microscopic cortical malformations known as ectopias and more rarely vascular micromalformations. And in some instances these cortical malformations appeared as a microgyrus. These studies and those of Cohen and others 1989 left square bracket 98 suggested abnormal cortical development which was presumed to occur before or during the sixth month of fetal brain development. Diverse endings appear incompatible with the theory suggesting that abnormal embryonic cell formations within the linguistic cerebral cortex have a primary role in causing dyslexia. 96, 99, 100. Abnormal embryonic cell formations in dyslexics found on autopsy have also been reported in non-language. Cerebral and subcortical brain structures, 97, 101, MRI data have calmed a cerebral a role in dyslexia, 102, developmental dyslexia of genetic or prenatal origin has been highly correlated to a primary neurophysiological dysfunction, or delayed maturation of the cerebral or and vestibular systems, 103, 104, without any reasonable probability of newly and rapidly creating or dissolving primary abnormal embryonic, or other, cell formations within the brain, the acquired postnatal onset or intensification of dyslexic reading, and non-reading symptoms and related cerebral or vestibular. Neurological and electronistagnographic diagnostic signs have been reported following acquired vestibular-based impairments triggered by ear and sinus infections, mononucleosis, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, spinning and zero gravity as well as whiplash and post-concussion states, 99 right square bracket colon 5-6, 45-48. 111 to 112, 326. 346-349 left square bracket 100 right square bracket colon 349 left square bracket 105, 106, 107. Dyslexia and its many reading and non-reading symptoms as well as their determining mechanisms have often shown rapid improvements when treated with cerebellar vestibular stabilizing medications and related non-medical therapies. 72. Discontinuing medication shortly after favorable therapeutic responses are obtained results in an immediate reappearance of all dyslexic symptoms and their determining mechanisms. These endings suggest an alternative possibility, that the abnormal brain cells found in dyslexic brains secondarily result from the dyslexic process and its assumed primary cerebellar vestibular causation, 100, 349. Gene-Environment Interaction For more details on Gene X Environment, see Gene-Environment Interaction. Research has examined gene-environment interactions in reading disability through twin studies, which estimate the proportion of variance associated with environment and the proportion associated with heritability. Studies examining the influence of environmental factors such as parental education, 108, and teacher quality, 109, have determined that genetics have greater influence in supportive, rather than less optimal environments, 110, instead, it may just allow those genetic risk factors to account for more of the variance in outcome, because environmental risk factors that affect that outcome have been minimized, 111. As the environment plays a large role in learning and memory, it is likely that epigenetic modifications play an important role in reading ability. 
animal models and measures of gene expression and methylation in the human periphery, are used to study epigenetic processes, both of which have limitations, and extrapolating to the human brain, 112, leading to the human brain, 112, leading to the human brain, 112.